Hello everyone. In light of the recent outbreak of the Nipah virus in India, there has been an increased spotlight on the virus itself. However, the Nipah outbreak is something that a lot of people have no idea what is and which is quite deadly. So therefore, this video is committed to raising awareness about what the virus is, its endemic regions, and how it affects the body. The Nipah virus. Let's look at what is the Nipah virus or NIV. Nipah virus or NIV is a zoonotic virus. That means it's transmitted from animals to humans and can also be transmitted through contaminated food or directly between people. In infected people, it causes a range of illnesses from asymptomatic or subclinical infections to acute respiratory illness and fatal encephalitis. The virus can also cause severe disease in animals such as pigs, resulting in significant economic losses for farmers. Although the Nipah virus has caused only a few known outbreaks in Asia, it infects a wide range of animals and causes severe disease and death in people, making it a public health concern. Past Outbreaks Nipah virus was first recognized in 1999 during an outbreak among pig farmers in Malaysia. No new outbreaks have been reported in Malaysia since 1999. It was also recognized in Bangladesh in 2001, and nearly annual outbreaks have occurred in that country since. The disease has also been identified periodically in eastern India. Other regions may be at risk for infection, as evidence of the virus has been found in the known natural reservoir that is the Teropus bat species and several other bat species in a number of countries including Cambodia, Ma Ghana, Indonesia, Madagascar, the Philippines and Thailand. Past Outbreaks On the 19th of May 2018, a Nipah virus disease or NIV outbreak was reported from Koriko district of Kerala, India. This is the first NIV outbreak in South India. There have been 17 deaths and 18 confirmed cases as of the 1st of June 2018. The two affected districts were Korikod and Malapuram. A multidisciplinary team led by the Indian government's National Centre for Disease Control or NCDC is in Kerala to, in response to the outbreak. The WHO provided technical support to the Government of India when needed. The WHO does not recommend the application of any travel or trade restrictions or entry screening related to the NIV outbreak. The Nipah outbreak reported in Korikod and Malapuram districts of Kerala in India was the third of Nipah virus outbreaks in India, the earlier being in 2001 and 2007 both in West Bengal. A total of 23 cases were identified, including the index case with 18 laboratory confirmed cases. The southern, the southern Indian state of Kerala is now battling another deadly outbreak of the Nipah virus, its fourth since 2018. How does the Nipah virus propagate? Transmission. During the first recognized outbreak in Malaysia, which also affected Singapore, most human infections resulted from direct contact with sick pigs or their contaminated tissues. Transmission is thought to have occurred via unprotected exposure to secretions from the pigs or unprotected contact with the tissue of an animal. In subsequent outbreaks in, Malaysia, in Bangladesh and India, Consumption of fruits or fruit products, such as raw date palm juice, contaminated with urine or saliva from infected fruit bats, was the most likely source of infection. There are currently no studies on viral persistence in bodily fluids or the environment, including fruits. Human-to-human -human transmission of the Nipah virus 
has also been reported among family and caregivers of infected patients. During the later outbreaks in Bangladesh and India, Nipah virus spread directly from human to human through close contact with people's secretions and excretions. In Siliguri, India in 2001, transmission of the virus was also reported within a healthcare setting, where 75% of cases occurred among hospital staff or visitors. From 2001 to 2008, around half of reported cases in Bangladesh were due to human-to-human -human transmission through providing care to infected patients. Signs and Symptoms Human infections range from asymptomatic infection to acute respiratory infection, mild severe, and fatal encephalitis. Infected people initially develop symptoms including fever, headaches, myalgia or muscle pain, vomiting, and sore throat. This can be followed by dizziness, drowsiness, altered consciousness, and neurological signs that indicate acute encephalitis. Some people can also experience atypical pneumonia and severe respiratory problems, including acute respiratory stress. Encephalitis and seizures occur in severe cases, progressing to coma within 24 to 48 hours. The incubation period, that is the interval from infection to the onset of symptoms, is believed to range from 4 to 14 days. However, an incubation period as long as 45 days has been reported. Most people who survive acute encephalitis make a full recovery, but long-term neurologic conditions have been reported in survivors. Approximately 20% of fa patients are left with residual neurological consequences such as seizure disorder and personality changes. A small number of people who recover subsequently relapse or develop delayed onset encephalitis. The case fatality rate is estimated at 40 to 75 percent. This rate can vary by outbreak depending on local capabilities for epidemiological surveillance and clinical management. Diagnosis of the Nipah virus Initial signs and symptoms of the Nipah virus infection are non-specific, and the diagnosis is often not suspected at the time of presentation. This can hinder accurate diagnosis and creates challenges in outbreak detection, effective and timely infection control measures, and outbreak response activities. In addition, the quality, quantity, type, timing of clinical sample collection and the time needed to transfer samples to the laboratory can affect the accuracy of laboratory results. Nipah virus infection can be diagnosed with clinical history during the acute and convalescent phase of the disease. The main tests used are real-time polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR from bodily fluids and antibody detection via enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA. Other tests include polymerase chain reaction assay or PCR and virus isolation by cell culture. Treatment There are currently no drugs or vaccines specific for Nipah virus infection, although the WHO has identified Nipah as a priority disease for the WHO Research and Development Blueprint. Intensive supportive care is recommended to treat severe respiratory and neurologic complications. The natural host of this virus, fruit bats. Fruit bats of the family Teropodidae, particularly species belonging to the Teropus genus, are the natural hosts for Nipah virus. There is no apparent disease in fruit bats. It is assumed that the geographic distribution of Hinipa viruses overlaps with that of the Therapus category. This hypothesis was reinforced with the evidence of Hinipa virus infection in Therapus bats from Australia, Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, India, Indonesia, Madagascar, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Thailand, and Timor-Leste. 
African fruit bats of the genus Eidolon, family Theropodidae, were found positive for antibodies against Nipper and Hendra viruses, indicating that these viruses might be present within the ge geographic distribution of Theropodidae bats in Africa. Prevention In the absence of a vaccine, the only way to reduce or prevent infection in people is by raising awareness of the risk factors and educating people about the measures they can take to reduce exposure to the Nipah virus. Number 1. Reducing the risk of bat to human transmission. Efforts to prevent transmission to, should first focus on decreasing bat access to date palm sap and other fresh fruit products. Keeping bats away from sap collection sites with protective coverings, such as bamboo sap skirts, may be helpful. Freshly collected date palm juice should be boiled, and fruits should be thoroughly washed and peeled before consumption. Fruits with signs of bat bites should be discarded. Reducing the risk of animal to human transmission. Gloves and other protective clothing should be worn while handling sick animals or their tissues, and during slaughtering and culling procedures. As much as possible, people should avoid being in contact with infected pigs. In endemic areas, when establishing new pig farms, considerations should be given to presence of fruit bats in the area, and in general, pig feed and pig shed should be protected against bats when feasible. Reducing the risk of human-to-human -human transmission. Close unprotected physical contact with Nipah virus infected people should be avoided. Regular hand washing should be carried out after caring for or visiting sick people. Now that concludes this episode of Awareness. We hope you found this episode interesting and very informative. We urge you to kindly follow the recommendations of international organizations when it comes to diseases such as the Nipah virus. So, for more of such content on awareness, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash c slash Until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye bye for now.